a lot of conventional wisdom would have us think the amyloid that is associated with Alzheimer's is something that we need to remove and it's it's a mistake by the body clogging up the brain in, in its simplest form. But I wanna get into this. This is actually your research and your paradigm talks about how this is actually part of a protective mechanism from all the variables in our environment that are bombarding the brain. Yes. So I'll have you expand upon that and what we can do knowing that. Yeah, this is such a good point. So what happens here is that, again, everything is backward because people believe that there's nothing you can do, that this is uh, due to amyloid. They, you look in the brain of a patient, what do you see? You see a lot of amyloid, amyloid plaques. And then there was work done years ago. If you make mice create lots and lots of amyloid, they get a, something that looks like Alzheimer's. Aha, so the, the idea was, okay, this must be due to amyloid. And there was a nuance that was unfortunately missed here, that sure, you add a lot of amyloid, and of course, you get a problem. But that doesn't mean that what's causing the problem in the majority of us is due to amyloid. It simply means that amyloid is there. So here's what it turned out. Amyloid is a very interesting part of your innate immune system. So just as when you get COVID, out come the cytokines. Now the cytokines are there to help you. They're trying to get rid of the COVID. They're now trying to trigger initially an inflammatory response and then hand it off to your adaptive immune system, clear out the COVID. And for most of us, that works fine. I had COVID uh, a little over a year ago, sailed through it, no major problem. Uh, and of course, that's also why people you know, wanna get their adaptive systems set up to handle it when they get it. However, what happens is if you're in poor health, for example, you now might get this tremendous inflammatory response. And by the way, COVID as a virus actually inhibits your initial response. So it hides itself from your immune system, which is why people get this cytokine storm. Your immune system suddenly wakes up and says, oh my God, I've got this horrible virus. And so it pours out the cytokines and we die of cytokine storm. Alzheimer's has something very analogous, but much more chronic. So now you have an ongoing insult and it can be P. gingivalis from your oral microbiome. It can be herpes simplex from your lip. It can be HHV6A from your sinuses. It can be a leaky gut. You can go on and on and on. These insults are getting into your brain and that's been well documented by neuropathologists. And now your brain responds by saying, uh-oh, I'm under attack. I'm gonna start the immune process. And what does amyloid do? It coats these various microbes and kills them and sequesters them. So it's quite a good way to respond to this. And there are many people who've got amyloid in their brains and thinking perfectly clearly. But part of this is you're now downsizing. It's also now decreasing your mitochondrial function. It's decreasing your insulin signaling it's decreasing your BDNF signaling. So it's basically saying we're under attack and we're gonna live with a slightly smaller brain. And as long as you don't address that attack, what do you think happens? Smaller, 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 you die of Alzheimer's disease. So the idea of removing amyloid actually makes no sense. You have to remove the insults that are causing your brain to make the amyloid. You are dying literally of cytokine drizzle instead of cytokine storm. And this is why you can live with this stuff. You know, you don't get a diagnosis of Alzheimer's, as I mentioned earlier, for typically 20 years after you get it. So you're actually handling it pretty well, but you've got to get in there and figure out what is causing it. Remove those things, then find to remove the amyloid. And you can do that. There are antibodies to do that. You could, curcumin actually helps to bind and remove amyloid. So there are a number of ways to do this, but you don't want to do it as long as it's there protecting you. It's a little bit like saying, uh, we got a neighborhood where you know cops are coming into the neighborhood and someone got hit by a stray bullet. So if we just get rid of the cops, everything will be fine. No, you need to get rid of the criminals first, then get rid of the cops. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. We actually have a pro-inflammatory state with ApoE4, and so we have a slightly shorter lifespan and, of course, a markedly increased risk of developing Alzheimer's. Great. So we can address that.